So here is the sign. The Ministry of Culture and Tourism, Carahan Tepe, it's official. It's being excavated up on that hill. Carahan Tepe is, I believe, part of a super civilization that existed in southeast Turkey, along with Gebekli Tepe and the other Tas Tepela sites. I've been visiting here since 2014 with Andrew Collins, and this is what it looked like before it was excavated. It was only in 2019 it began excavation. And we had a chance to visit there on the winter solstice 2021 with JJ Ainsworth, and I'm convinced that this super ancient site that dates back to at least 11,000 years ago is not only contemporary with this remarkable culture that is only just emerging through all these sites in the Tas Tepela region, but there's something else. There's something absolutely remarkable and sophisticated about this site. So we have a look here. We had a good look round. You can join us here in September on our tour we're organizing. I also want to thank Dakota of Earth for this drone footage, which he filmed just a couple of weeks before we arrived there. And do check out his amazing YouTube channel where Dakota explores the world, gives amazing insights uh, from a spiritual and archeological perspective and uh, the links below and I do recommend you check out his work but for now I just want to show you the site in its entirety looking at all the excavation that's taken place and a look at some of the areas that are still to be excavated. So here we are at Karahan Tepe on the morning of the winter solstice 2021 and you can see behind me here this is like the the shrine the kind of sunken shrine the pit shrine where there's these 11 standing pillars carved out of solid bedrock the strange head sticking out and also one of the pillars is actually a freestanding figure but what's happening here on the winter solstice as the sun's rising we're here just after sunrise is that the face and some tops of the pillars are getting illuminated it's almost like it's some kind of clock and so we may be the first people to witness this in like 10,000 years because this site is at least 11,400 or 500 years old and it hasn't been exposed possibly for 10,000 years. And so to witness this possible alignment where the sun is shining through the actual portal stone that links the main enclosure with the, the kind of uh, monolith pit shrine is really, really intriguing. And so we're really lucky with the weather. It's absolutely beautiful. And you can just see behind me here what we're dealing with. This is, so this is all gonna be covered over today. The officials are coming in, the archeologists are coming in. So this is the la literally the last day to see this before it's open to the public sometime next year. So we'll just come round to the other side. Here's the remains clearly of a tea pillar just sitting up on the hill here. And we have a couple of what well, are clearly the portal stones. Now we saw these on a previous visit here in 2018. So we know we knew these existed anyway and we know there's portals there because we can literally see them. And you've got a rounded stone here, much like, similar to the plates in the museum, but obviously this is much thicker and much wider. But again, there's many artifacts that are probably still to be sorted out here at Karahan Tepe. In our previous video, you can see 10 of the most amazing artifacts actually discovered at Karahan Tepe. We know where some of them were found. We know the small statue of the gentleman looking upwards was found in like the center of the main enclosure. We know the main figure that appears to have some kind of cat on its back is was also found in the main enclosure in between a tea pillar and the stone thrones. And there are other pieces, like some of the heads were found inside the walls. The stone plates were actually found on the benches between the tea pillars and in where the kind of megalithic throne is as well. And so some of them were not sure exactly where they were found, but they were obviously found within the site itself. And you can see here how amazing and intricate some of these are. But this is interesting because there could be carvings on there. And if we go over here, we can actually see tea pillars just sticking out the ground. These were fully buried, you can see, because they haven't got that kind of white weathering on top and the lichen. You've got another, what looks like a portal stone there, and a kind of sacred bowl, which they may have brewed beer in, that's one of the theories. 
And just underneath this white canopy you can see in the bottom right there is actually a very interesting statue that appears to have eight fingers on each hand. Then you have these two T-pillars in this higher enclosure here. I don't think this would have been on bedrock, so there could even be literally enclosures under this one. Even behind that you can see further T-shaped pillars. But it's interesting because there's more down there, there's more pillars. But there on the top of those you can see the kind of white where they, that was, they were originally sticking out the ground. So these are some of the ones we walked over a few years ago. And uh, we're actually pointing these out in our previous videos. So that is interesting. And there's the main enclosure down there. It's just starting to be illuminated on this winter solstice morning. And you've got the Tech Tech Mountains. You've got Ketchley Hill over there, which we're going to visit as well. And even just beneath me here, we have more tea pillars <laughs> that haven't been excavated yet. So there's still more to be done. There's more pillars just there. Look at that portal stone there. That is absolutely huge. You can just see that there. That is amazing. So you've got the T pillars and a massive portal stone. They may have had 3D relief carvings on it as well. And some of these large slabs I find quite interesting. What on earth were they used for? Were they, is this part of the packing? This is something that Nechmi Karul wrote about in his paper, that they packed the stones and dirt uh, really carefully when they were kind of decommissioning the site. And, so, and some of the stones on top were actually quite large. Yeah, you've got a T-pillar there, just sticking out of the side there. Hard to tell if it's got any carvings on it, you can't see any from here. And you've got these two here just near me and then you've got the massive portal stone just behind there you've got some interesting stones here you see that one you see this the sort of rounded slab the one just above that has been beautifully carved and it looks like a huge stone originally that would have had carvings all over it there's even one behind that as well and you've got obviously you've got a broken t-pillar just in the background there and these giant slabs and we're now looking down on the enclosure. A really beautiful view of it, actually. It looks pretty rough hewn, but according to Neshmi Karal, this is definitely deliberately buried, even though it looks like it may have been destroyed before it was actually buried. And then you've got the kind of megalithic thrones on this side here. So I'm standing right here above one of these megalithic thrones which appeared to have T-pillars on either side but these are carved out of the solid bedrock. Now we have other T-pillars quite badly damaged, ones that have two in the middle that have clearly fallen over, they've kind of crumbled to pieces to be honest with you. And but these probably would have been shaped like T-pillars so there's this blending of working through the earth and the stone with the construction on the surface. So you get two different elements of working with the stone and out on the surface. And you can see the portal stone over there. And this is just really quite interesting. So I'm gonna, I'm interesting in all these other enclosures higher up. Being, and so there's probably enclosures underneath those. You've got T pillars up there. You've got interesting shaped stones all over the place. So absolutely amazing to be here to witness this in the sunny beautiful weather again we see all the cut marks and scoop marks in the rock this is quite impressive massive cut marks here collecting water 
one of the earliest places in the world where you actually have these. I'm going to head back down, look into the pillar shrine, see if the light's hitting some more of the stones. Yeah, there's the other pit there, but AB. Look at the shaping on all of that. That is just... And then hopefully the sun... Oh, maybe it won't. It's starting to illuminate. The uh, You just see the head of the kind of creature there. Just starting to illuminate. And all the way along there is this very, very long serpent going all the way across. You just about make it out, I think. But with cut marks here as well, which always interests me. You've got like these other pits. Absolutely mind blowing. And you've got the water channel, specifically serpentine, carved out there. And we're starting to see the illumination of more of the stones now as the day goes on. You can just see some of them there. The freestanding one is starting to be illuminated. The head, the top part of the head now illuminated so it's almost like the whole face gets illuminated during the sunrise coming through that portal stone i'll take some readings of the alignments as well because just to get some more accuracy because i know andrew's done a lot of work on this this is absolutely amazing as you just watch the sunrise different elements kind of come alive then not all of this will be illuminated just some of it So this is why we think, when I was here with Andrew and we kind of mapped this all out a few years ago, that we think this is a series of avenues, like double pillars, because they're always in pairs, it seems, going all the way to the top, like probably where the little can is being placed. And so that's really intriguing. I mean, there's, there's a lot of these, not just one or two, there's a whole bunch, probably just 250 in total, in fact, they found at the site. These were recorded just by this one sticking out of the ground before it was even excavated. So we're just down again on the southeastern kind of side. You've got pillars sticking out of the ground here and just here. And just up here, we have three more, quite large ones actually. There's actually a whole circle of them here, it looks like. Now we've been here before, so I'm just repeating what I put in my previous videos. But I just want to put it in context with what's being discovered just over the hill at the main site, literally just over there. So these could have been much bigger, these pillars. They seem small now, but they've been worn down. You've got three here, you can see. And here, this looks like an artificial mound just behind my shadow. You can see pillars sticking up there. So this is probably a whole other area that's been deliberately filled in. So where all these stones are, which is like everywhere, where there's kind of earth and the pillars sticking out of the ground, it's probably more of what we're seeing at the main excavation at Carahan Tepe. So what we're seeing already, what we're showing you today, is just the tip of the iceberg. There's much more to be found. Two here in fact you see this so this is like the idea that they're kind of avenues of pillars leading up to the top but some of them look like they're circles enclosures others look like avenues so we're gonna have a lot of fun trying to reconstruct this when it comes to that and there you go you can clearly see this mound here is clearly been deliberately filled in where all these small stones are, i'm absolutely sure of it that's where there's excavation to be done and it could go on all the way over there onto those hills there to the east because the archaeologist here has been doing work and even Andrew pointed this out 
we were here in 2018 that there's stuff going on over there and you can see that there's what looks like the beginnings of trenches and excavations because this whole area where all this valley is here there could be a whole system in there we don't know about so yeah so this could be as big and as impressive as Gebekli Tepe just walking up the hill over what I believe is clearly a deliberately buried tepe or mound you can clearly see the tea pillar sticking up out the ground so we're probably walking on something just as impressive as the main enclosure like we walked on <laughs> previously not even realizing what was beneath it just there is a tea pillar the top of it just sticking out of the ground another taller one here it goes on and on and on see other ones going up the hill you see in pairs it's quite impressive you see those two in the distance there in the middle of the screen two more in parallel rows it appears going up the hill this small chunk of what i thought was stone could actually be a piece of terrazzo flooring which we find in abundance at the Vali churi and also at gebekli tepe this is basically an artificial concrete or geopolymer made of limestone pieces embedded in lime mortar and so even though locals have suggested they've seen this kind of flooring at the site before this is the first piece of evidence that suggests it was actually found at the main site, which we can see just up on the hill here. Just going around the southern side to where the main excavation is, and we see more beautiful pillars just sticking out of the ground there. So we're now just coming up the southern side up to the excavation. We want to come in from the other side so we can actually see over the excavation from a different angle, give you some good shots. Got more enclosures here. You've even got this kind of circular stone just here, just beneath me. T pillars. So we're just seeing it from a different angle here. Just wanted to show you this. This is a really good view. I'll zoom in a bit for you. Just walk along. There's actually some T pillars right beneath me here. So we've got a giant tea pillar just beneath me here. Wow, this is amazing. More rocks here, probably carvings on them somewhere lots of broken stuff it's almost like it was deliberately broken up this site it's really odd i've actually got this one here i want to show you i'm not sure what to make of that but that's uh actually the one we just looked at from but from the other side so yeah and even going down there still there's still more more excavation to be done this is just mind-blowing I'll get photos of all these as well, but you've got a portal stone here actually. Some kind of creature. That does actually look like a portal stone, doesn't it? And that just beneath the uh, T pillar there. And you can see the way it's been filled up, and apparently, according to the archaeologist report which I was reading, it was all very deliberately done in a very specific way like Gebekli Tepe was but this even more detailed different layers this is just gets more interesting the more you look and I guarantee there's going to be more discoveries being made as we go around the site
So we're just looking at the enclosure kind of from the south and you can just see how amazing this is. I've got close-ups of everything I can. I've got access to many parts of the site that they're going to close down any day, today in fact. So we're really pleased to be here. So I've got Ismail, he's been brilliant, showing me around, keeping me within the, the law, within the rules. But yeah, I mean, I just want to share this with you because this is Camerahan Tepe. This is the most important archaeological discovery probably of the decade. Uh, probably the last 20 years really since Gebekli Tepe. So it's a very, very important site. We're going to have another look in the Pillar Shrine because I want to get that with the light on it. But we've been all around the site looking at all these different enclosures that are still being excavated. We've seen unexcavated places. We've seen a whole area where clearly there's like a mound has been carefully placed with stone and rubble on top of it but you can just I just love the fact that you can actually see the enclosure now in the broad daylight and this stunning kind of megalithic hypogeum type benches that are all around the side there so this is just absolutely delightful and it's a beautiful morning beautiful winter morning winter solstice 2021 and we feel there is an alignment as the sun rises it goes through the portal and illuminates the head, the protruding head with the serpent neck on it. So we feel we might have discovered something here. Now we're going to double check this and sort of use different uh, programs to see if this is correct. Get Andrew Collins to have a look at that with us because he found an alignment going in the opposite direction um, where the summer solstice sunset goes over and basically rises up set in that direction over there exactly the same orientation as the winter solstice sunrise so we're looking at the same thing and this route going through the main enclosure and down here just down this area here this is like the, what is thought to be the southern entrance just pretty much uh, kind of in between these two stones here and so you go through the entrance you go through climbing up the steps going through the 70 centimeter wide hole into the pillar shrine then into the other underground chamber so there's a lot of possibilities of what they were doing but there's certainly a water or a liquid element here as well and you can see that because they naturally fill up with water there's kind of what looks like carved out parts of the rock where water would go through like little channels but yeah, it's a real treat to be here. We're hoping to meet uh, the main archaeologist. He's coming up here in a few hours. But we thought we'd come here early to have the site to ourselves and do check out our tour we're going to be doing later in, um, later in the year, in September, September 2022, where we're going to come to Karahan Tepe. More excavation will be done by then. Plus, we go to many other sites, loads of sites, Gebekli Tepe, some of the other Tas Tepela sites, all Hattusa, Chattelhoyek, and everything else. But for now, Let's just enjoy this moment here at Karahan Tepe on the winter solstice 2021. So we're just leaving the main area of Karahan Tepe now on this winter solstice morning. We're going to be looking at more here. There's the Ketchley Hill over to the north, which we've been to before. But I want to check this out because to see if there's any more orientations, any more discoveries being made up there. It's featured in a previous video I did on Karahan Tepe when I came here with Andrew. But I want to take another look because they've got hypogeum caves there. This square enclosure amongst other things. So we're going to have a little rest, have a cup of tea with Ismail and his crew. Thanks for watching Megalithomaniacs. Hope you enjoyed this unique journey around one of the most important discoveries. I think in the history of archaeology here at Karahan Tepe. Please join us here in September also because it's going to be more discoveries are going to be made by them. And you can see what's on display in the museum to give you an inkling of that. So anyway, take care. We'll speak to you soon and keep watching. Please subscribe. We'll see you next time.